Cliff Thorburn, thank you for being on the on on the podcast. I'm an absolute huge fan of yours. As you may be aware, I run a, a podcast for Q Sport players. Um, you being one of, I think when people mention snooker and they mention kind of icons and legends of the sport, you are someone who's definitely up there whose name gets brought up all the time. So I cannot thank you enough for coming on the podcast. I, I appreciate you and I appreciate your time. Well, it's my pleasure, uh, Kevin, and uh, 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 well, looking forward to uh, the questions. Yeah, absolutely no problem at all. At the moment in the UK, we, we are in a bit of a strange situation, as the rest of the world is, regarding lockdown and stuff. How has it actually been for you, Cliff, in, in Canada? Uh, well, the, uh, the rooms have been uh, uh, you know, closed, opened off and on. Uh, it's been very frustrating for people uh, that as far as... Uh, I mean, the small businesses, you've got to include them in small businesses. But uh, I mean, like, for instance, we have a place here called the Master Q, yeah. which is just down the road from me. And um, uh, he's got 8,000 square feet there, and uh, he's allowed to have 10 people in there. So, <sighs> yeah, so uh, it makes it very, very, uh, I mean, it's it's maddening to a lot of people. And, mm -hmm. you know, and this doesn't include the, you know, as some people might laugh, you know, like the snooker players themselves, you know, yeah. well, not, not business owner, but, you know, the people that love the game and, and uh, they, uh, they can't, they can't play and get their daily fix, so to speak, you know, mm -hmm. because uh, uh, as a, a player that played a lot and then sort of had time off, uh, I can really recognize the value of, of uh, um, uh, you know, playing all the time. If you don't play, I mean, it's, uh, you you can you can uh, not play snooker for a week and and uh, that that could possibly feel like it's been six weeks you know yeah. so it's uh, you know like a concert pianist uh, you can uh, you know that uh, you know the the people who play the piano professionally they should uh, uh, you know at least spend an hour a day you know moving their hands and everything and just uh, you know muscle memory mm -hmm. and the same thing applies with snooker and uh, so. Uh, you know, even like concert pianists, they'll uh, you know almost say that you know a, a two hours a day is better than three days at seven hours. You know, <laughs> and it was, that was a, a long-winded. Uh, you know, like I brought in a concert pianist to a snooker player as well. Uh, That's all right. I am. Um, I know what you mean regarding. I tried to play the guitar once, and uh, you've got to stick it that the same kind of way. If you take a day, a week, or any time off, you feel like you might as well go back to square one. It's uh, yeah. It's it's really hard to kind of get that momentum going, especially with the snooker players. But I feel I think World Snooker have done an amazing job so far to be able to kind of get uh, to get the games on, especially over this this period where the lockdown in the UK is kind of hit kind of fever pitch. I would say. So I think. Um, the fact that they've been able to get all these these competitions on the UK was on and then the Scottish and now the Grand Prix at the moment. I think that's kind of like a, a testament to snooker, the fact that they've been able to get these together by being able to test the guys regular and kind of keep these, keep snooker on the TV, at least for people to get their fix. Yeah, I think it's, I think, well, they've done a wonderful job. Uh, of, I mean, I think that uh, uh, it's good in a way that there's only one... Uh, one place to play all the time. I mean, like, can you imagine them even traveling? I mean, like, suppose that one was in, in Scotland and then they were in Ireland the next day and, they, you know, changing hotels. And it just, uh, I think it's a, uh, it's a comfort uh, uh, feeling for a lot of the players, uh, to be honest with you, especially the young ones that don't have the, uh, you know, uh, things that they have to do. I mean, you know, uh, parenting, uh, yes. you know, husbanding, uh, uh, well, it's a new word, um, but just, uh, yeah, but, uh, you know, the fact that they're, uh, you know, around good players all the time, too, I mean, that's just, I think it's wonderful, wonderful for the young guys, and of course, the older you are, the more peeved off that you are, and hence, uh, well, I don't know if Ronnie's, the, is Ronnie the oldest player of, of everybody there? Is he, uh, he's, he's awfully close. Too. Yeah. Oh my God! Yeah, he's yeah, forty-five. Ouch, forty-five. Yeah, but uh, that, you know, I think that the um, world snooker, the standard, uh, the you know, there's lots of things, lots of good things have come out of uh, this, and uh, uh, you know, I mean, I I sort of look at that as a positive. I know, yeah. but I mean, I'm, you know, there's people over here who just can't wait to watch the snooker every day. I mean, uh, they're you know, like the guys out on the West Coast in Canada, well, that's like an eight-hour time difference for a, 
you know, like a 10 hour match at the crucible was, Hey, which uh, last August. And, uh, I mean, they were, well, they didn't go to bed. They just stayed, you know, they started watching it at two o'clock in the morning, but that's, uh, the, and, uh, the fact that it's streaming too, they're, uh, just streaming, you know, on TV, everybody, no, no, no fans. Uh, I mean, the, you can just tell how interested the people are with are with snooker, whereas other sports like, I think I just sort of read like the NFL football, which is the biggest sport here in North America, and, uh, in uh, North America, fan wise, that uh, their numbers are way down. So uh, you know, hats off to um, uh, uh, Barry Hearn and all the snooker crowd. Exactly. So Cliff, you've had a a, a glittering career, obviously one numerous titles over 20 professional titles in a in a like in a in an illustrious career you the world title in 1980 you've won scottish masters you've won the benson and hedges or the masters now you've won the canadian championship numerous multiple times where did it start for you cliff how i mean i know you you've said that you've got into a snooker a bit of an unconventional way but how did how did like how did it all begin for you yeah i think well i've just um i i, I as a very young man. I, well, as a kid, really, I, like twelve or thirteen, just uh, went went over to a friend's place and we were just fooling around. But they, you know, because I played baseball and the game called lacrosse and soccer, and uh, I was pretty good at all those games. Just you know, with my hands. I mean, I was, well soccer, but I played goal. You know, yeah. so, <laughs> so that was. Uh, but um, you know, just ball spins and uh, you know rubber balls and mm-hmm. just uh, I, I I was just fascinated by it. And then uh, and then when I was about uh, I think a year later, I, I I went to watch my father bowl, and I just uh, in Victoria, BC, on the west coast, you got to go there sometime. Yeah. When, when, when this all clears up, and uh, just I uh, went went down the stair, uh, stairs of this. Uh, uh, um, bowling alley and there was a billiard room down there and and somebody uh, 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 doubled or banked the, uh, the black ball in the side and and a uh, big moan went up and all this money was thrown on the table and I was just absolutely mesmerized but it was balls, pockets, sticks, uh, you know, it's sort of like, you know, it fell right in and, and as I said, when I was inducted into the Canadian uh, Sports Hall of Fame many years ago and uh, I think my first words were, well, how do you become a world uh, a champion at snooker? And I said, well, first of all, uh, the most important thing was that my father said, don't, don't go down there again. You know? <laughs> he didn't want me to go down there. It's like, I said, you know, like, don't play the piano. So all of a sudden, well, I, you know, and uh, off he goes. But uh, I was just fascinated by it. But, the, you know, the intrigue of actually don't go down there really sort of caught my attention i know and uh, and then i was just absolutely hooked i couldn't i couldn't wait to uh, you know i couldn't wait to wake up uh, you know yeah. i didn't want to go to sleep i just wanted to be around it and wanted to see good players play and 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 so on but there were no tournaments i didn't i i remember if you look on the map uh, thunder bay ontario sort of uh, uh, just uh, uh, from vancouver we'll say the west coast is per- uh, you know, it's about 1,500 miles from uh, Vancouver and about another thousand miles to uh, to uh, Toronto. And I, and it's, you know, so that's like the middle of nowhere, winter time. And I just went into a pool room and I saw a thing there. It said uh, Joe Davis wins World Championship, an old paper uh, uh, clipping. And I didn't even know that there was a World Championship until that moment in time. I was probably 19 or something like that, so I didn't have any. Uh, and and there weren't uh, you know a lot of champions around so to speak, but there were uh, people that you know uh, uh, that basically taught themselves how to play. And of course, there were some real good ones too. But uh, uh, yeah, it was uh, it was tough in those days too. I remember you know uh, one time I I was uh, shoot uh, rolling the black into the uh, side pocket from it was on its spot, which you know, it must have been a wonderful. Uh, a positional shot they played there uh, but anyways if i if i make it i don't have a place to stay and uh no no sorry if i make it i've got a place to stay if i miss it uh i don't so anyways uh, i didn't hit it hard enough <laughs> it just stayed over the pocket so uh i didn't and it was cold out too so i didn't do that again you know they, <laughs> like there's uh, there's um, lessons in life uh yeah but that I, 
you know, and then it was, you know, just frustrating, but I, and I broke 11 cues, I think the first, you know, <laughs> and the first two years that I played. Uh, and uh, they all had my name on them because they were rentals and I hid them under a stairwell in, in behind this board and the owner found them all one, uh, one day and it, he just came up to me, he's got all this kindling and, so he, <laughs> and said, uh, Thorburn, uh, are these yours? I said, yes, sir. He said, well, you're barred. And uh, so that was another lesson in life. And then I won the, North, I, I won the Western Canadian Championship about two years later. And, uh, but uh, uh, Dave Smith, the owner of the room had actually passed away. So, you know, so that was like another lesson as well. I just, mm -hmm. uh, I was absolutely, absolutely devastated uh, by that, you know, but um, I, uh, you know, how could you, how could you love something so much and then hate it as well? And that's, yeah. you know, like breaking 11 cues and, uh, you know, I mean, you've got to you've got to go through walls. You get stopped by walls. You have to get over walls. There's always something stopping you. And and, and uh, with no tournaments, you uh, you're really on your own. But um, it was an era where in Canada, especially in Toronto, when I was about 19 or 20, we would we would play snooker all day, and then we would all get together at night and have a coffee. And we were young guys then, and uh, or a pop and. Uh, and, and then we just talk about the day's activities in the billiard room and, uh, you know, there's no books out then or anything like that, but they were fascinating years for me. And I, and, and uh, if you look at it now, if you go to a, if there's a club somewhere, even like in the UK that they actually talk about it, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? A bunch of young guys get together or people talk about it. not this, you know, oh, uh, you know, he was the greatest. He was a blah blah blah. Like, you know, but just talk about the day's activity, shots that came up. It's sort of more, more like a golf course activity, and like, stu uh, like study the game type of bit. Yeah, 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 and just uh, you know, and all these thoughts come up, and uh, and it just it's just amazing what you can learn, and you know, copying people's bridges, and uh, you know, but now with everything that's going on, and all the coaches, I mean, I'm not surprised that there's so many wonderful players out there the young guys you know yeah. of course the kids from uh um, asia i mean they're yes. they're fantastic. starting off with you know well it, it was the first guy uh frankie chan i think was from hong kong back in the old days and there was and of course uh, james uh, watson as you know from you know from thailand was uh, I, you know like there was a new wave coming over but uh, you know it took a while but now Man, these uh, these young guys. I just uh, at the age of sixteen or what? I'm, I mean, that's about the time that I started playing about mm -hmm. sixteen, and uh, and I was a quick learner. Uh, but uh, the guys, uh, the kids now, and one four sevens in competitions at at the age of fourteen, and and uh, Ronnie making uh, one four sevens left handed as well. I mean, that really Phenomenal. bothered. Me. <laughs> that's, that's unbelievable that Ronnie. Ronnie made a left hand, uh, a one four seven left handed. Uh, um, I think just fantastic. I think it's helped as well with regarding the Asian players coming over with Ding Xiong Wei coming over and opening up a, he has a, an academy over here as well, which I think it's very inviting for the Asian players to come over and practice. You've got, and then like you say, you see them on the TV a lot now, like Lu Ning and all them, then they're all starting to come through. But like exactly what you said, at a very young age, they seem to kind of excel very, very quickly. And But yeah, Ronnie doing left-handed 147s must, um, must <laughs> that, that's definitely strange. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, he, he deserves a slap. For, um, <laughs> I mean, like, you can't, uh, like, that's bothered, uh, I'm, you know, it's probably, well, I'm, you know, it's just blown somebody, uh, you know, but people's minds are that, uh, you know, just that a person can be that good. But, I mean, I was around in my, like, when I was leaving the game, he was uh, just coming in 95 or 6, yeah. somewhere around 94, and uh, I think he won, like, 65 straight matches and, and all this stuff, and I was... And I was just leaving the game, and I thought, oh boy, well that's you know, it's, uh, it's a very good time like to get out in the sense of actually, act, you know, uh, playing. And I mean, I I played an exhibition, uh, uh, some a charity thing. Uh, I think it was last year down South London there, Gravesend, and uh, a young fellow beat me. I don't know how old he was. He was twelve or something, <laughs> and uh, and, uh, and and I think I made a hundred. I made a hundred and. 
121 break the next frame, which was the last frame of the night, but nobody talks about my 121. You know what I mean? At the age of 70, they talk about getting beat by a 12 year old. So yeah. I'm not going to play anybody, you know, that that is under the age of 60 <laughs> is what I'm going to be doing. But I still love the game. And, uh, you know, the young guys thrust are thrust into this, uh, you know, knowledge factory. And, uh, and uh, you know, they just had the opportunity of, of realizing like golf that there are so many different styles and uh, like when golf and you got the club like this and when you actually come into the ball then most players are are there you know like the same position and you know how the how the club goes back and then ends up coming into it like they're all sort of there yeah. and and the, and the same thing applies with snooker you know you can play great snooker with you you know not sort of having all the lines there with the you know the elbow the head and the hand etc and you can um uh, you know, with Ray, you know, Reardon had his elbow sticking out and, uh, you know, the, uh, his tip was uh, like a bit like uh, a mine being like an inch from the ball. You know, his uh, yeah. his depth perception was terrible. And, uh, but, you know, a wonderful player. And, uh, but, and, you know, the people like Ronnie and a few other people, like you see them, like with the elbow sort of tuck, tucked in this way here. Mm -hmm. And, uh you know, so that and and that sort of comes from uh, the you know starting to play like at an early age. You know, when you uh, you know if if you really start to play at a young age, well then your elbow uh, will be tucked in probably at the start. But anyways, there's so many different ways to play. You know, fast players, uh, uh, slow players, um, and um, yeah. Well, actually, like just getting into that, I was right. I'll admit that I was a uh, you know a, a slower kind of player but i was i was the fastest of the slow players yes but i was definitely the slowest of the fast players yeah. <laughs> but brilliant. anyways uh yeah and 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 i always tried to you know i i tried to speed up i tried to just i you know i tried everything to I had so much i had so much trouble uh, aiming and and uh, but now just even people uh that start playing at the age of 14 we'll see i mean somebody's got to be i mean like, you know if like if i could win the world championship with uh, you know the dominant left eye and the and the you know the tip being that far away from the cue ball and you know figure it out myself and now when you've got a coach and you know there's glasses and all sorts of things that you can do but uh there's you know you can you can you can be successful and uh, not you know be a hendry or a, a a Davis that just sort of, you know, plops down and, and like they're all set to go. And it, it just seems like the, you know, the cue is in the middle of your, the, you know, the chin and, you know, like it's almost like the, uh, you know, straight up with your nose. And then the eyes actually look in like that, it seems like. And I used to look at them and go, you lucky bugger. You know, that you have no idea how I'm going to sleep tonight. And all this. <laughs> Uh, but uh, it just, uh, you know, there's so many ways to play. It's wonderful. And everybody, this information, but talent, the touch of these guys, you put them in the balls and, they're, you know, six reds left and, and uh, you know, uh, uh, 65 down or something, and, you know, and clear up with a 75. And it just, it's just, uh, nobody seems to have any nerves anymore. I mean, I, you know, uh, you know, it's almost sad to see somebody have the nerves now because, everybody's got a uh, great uh, uh, nerves and and uh, I wanted to uh, just uh, go back to to ding you see I really want I think the ding was a little bit nervous in that first session when he uh, lost to Selby but just not because of you know uh, any physical things mm -hmm. just he made a couple of you know he wanted to uh, he wanted to sort of take over the, the, the you know dictate the game against Selby yeah well not, you know good luck there yeah and uh, you know but anyways he wanted to be forceful and he sort of got out of his uh, pattern and then uh, he was uh, four or five down I uh, four or five down immediately a five one down or something and he ended up losing by four so that's just uh, you know he'll never like if he's in that spot again he'll never do that but yeah reason why I'm saying all this is that I really love this guy's game and uh, he's a father now and uh, you know he's the uh, he's the emperor of, of China you know yeah. or the prime you know a prime minister of China and uh, I you know he really deserves to be world champ I'd love to see him 
uh, be the world champion of a, you know, overseas player that hasn't done it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, he's a remarkable player. He's got the, he's got the, uh, the weight of the world on the shoulder. Yeah. That guy, but just, I love, he's such a nice, nice guy. And, uh, uh, huge, huge fan of his. I really want him to win. He's such a lovely guy as well, and he's like you say, he's so talented. When he's in in the balls, um, his white ball control is absolutely fascinating to watch. Um, just yeah, he's one of those players where you can just sit and watch and watch, and you can just see that he's got that white ball on a string. Whereas some players have that ability to pot the way out of trouble. His white always seems to land exactly where he wants it every time. And yep, I know he's had some some. They haven't gone his way some of the um, the games that he's recently played, but every time that he's going to be playing, I have to watch him because he's just like you say, he's got that star quality. And yes, it would be an absolute shame, it would be a crying shame for him to never win the world championship. It would be, um, and I can see him doing it. I just think, like you say, he's without loss that he had the other day to, uh, to Selby. I, th- I don't think that he'll do that again. And I think that yeah. he'll grow from that and kind of keep moving on. And uh, I still think he's got it in him because it just it just seems to get to a certain stage. And then I don't know whether he changes his game or he tries to. I don't know. I don't know. Obviously, the mind of the, of the snooker player, but uh, for some reason, he just hasn't got to that to that stage. Well, I do think he will. I do think there's a possibility that he's still got it. He's still definitely got it in him to win a world title. Yes, he does. And and uh, all of these uh, the the matches that are best of sevens, uh, they're. Um, you know, I I like that. You know, yeah. it uh, that uh, that's uh, that's really going to toughen you up. I know I know that it's easier for uh, you know, say like a youngster with no experience to you know to be one of the top players, of course, because he only has to win four frames. And it's uh, you know, it, like if you put yourself in both, uh, you know, you know the shoes of each each a player. Like if you're a if you're a youngster, you're I mean, this could be a you know, the first one to 18 and it's, and it's a 14 all, you know, yeah. you know, so he feels like he's, he's closer than, you know, what he really should be kind of a thing. But, and now the, you know, somebody like Ding who, who's uh, you know, he, he goes into that, you know, a best of, uh, the, you know, a best of 35 thing at 14 all. So, you know, it's like, you know, it's like a change of mode kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. So he's, but, you know, he, I mean, it's just, tough you you know like you're giving up you're giving up something with these short matches but it you know it does harden you up you know so like a long match now like for somebody like ding uh you know it, it, well like it just seems like the world championship is now the only long uh, long match they've shortened yeah. up the, uh, the uk and everything i just think that if he has some good results with the shorter matches and uh you know get gets his tail up a little bit then you know he he's going to contend again i mean it you know, he, you know, it's almost like a sneak attack because Ronnie's, you know, people are, you know, almost just waiting to hear what Ronnie has to say more than play. You yeah. Know? But, uh, I, yeah, I'm very pro Ding and, uh, I'm, you know, I'd, I'd like to see him do well, but, um, uh, there's so many good players. It does make, it does make for very interesting uh, viewing. I, I must say, but, uh, yeah, I obviously, I still love snooker. I don't watch a lot of the matches just because of. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna get that uh, uh, the zone. Is that what they call it? Yes. That, yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna be getting that. I'm probably to watch the uh, the Masters. But somebody said that the Masters might not be on or something. Is it just because of uh, the lockdown? Yeah, I or, think I think it's kind of like it's not that it's in the air. I think that just it's it could be. I think that it's kind of like a, the waiting to see. But I'd be very surprised if they didn't if the Masters didn't go ahead with the way everything else is the way everything else has been done. And yeah, I'd be very very surprised if it didn't. But they've they've got to kind of say that they've got to kind of say that just to you know to cover themselves just in case just in case it didn't. But it would be that would be a shame to start the year without the Masters. Yeah, yeah. I, that, well, that would be yeah. Well, well, of course. I mean, that would be. Well, that would be that would be the end. I mean, that would oh, that would be horrible. But uh, it's funny. I I was at the Masters uh, last uh, or this last January for the first time, probably uh, in twenty years or so, because I had you know, just no reason to come over because yeah. I come over to the worlds. And I remember s- sitting there with uh, um, uh, uh, Stuart Bingham, and uh, you know that uh, he's just waiting to play his last session, or maybe it's a first session of the final and and he said did you ever win it club you know 
And I said, uh, I said, yeah, three, uh, three times. I, you know, I said, oh, by the way, I need a new press guy. <laughs> but that's what, that's what, you know, I mean, well, well, that's just what uh, happens. But I'm glad that they made the Masters a, uh, you know, the uh, what's what's it called, uh, the Triple Crown or something. Triple Crown, you know, yeah. Because that sort of gave me three more, uh, three more. Uh, wins there but uh yeah i i uh, always always liked uh, the masters i'm uh, that was uh because it was uh, but, but, but it, you know it was never a ranking tournament and i guess it was fair to the other 150 pros well you know why is that a you know a ranking tournament and i just felt like saying well because you're not good enough you know what yeah. i mean you know but why you're not playing uh, but anyway so that was um yeah there was uh Anyways, well, that's another story. But uh, yeah, uh, uh, love the Masters. First time that I was, I was at the, um, um, the, the, uh, the, well, the venue there. What's it, what's it called? The uh, oh, you've got me. Oh, Alexandra Pally. Yes, of yeah. course, Ali Pally. Yeah, yeah. Ali Pally. Yeah, and it's not far from a friend of mine's uh, house where I stay. But uh, yeah, that, uh, that's uh, quite the venue, and uh, you know, really is part of the history now. What actually got you over to the UK, Cliff? What made you decide to 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 move over here to play? Well, well, to move over, yeah, I was uh, in seventy. Uh, I guess it was seventy three. Uh, I came over in seventy three, so I was like twenty five, yeah. and uh, probably only played about six tournaments in my life because I was barred from everything over in Canada. You know, they said that I was a you know professional because I I didn't have a job. Well. Um, you know, and, uh, well, that's what my dad used to say, get a job. So did you just used to travel around Canada playing, playing people? Yeah. Yeah. Money games and stuff. Yeah. I wasn't really, I wasn't uh, very much of a hustler, but I just, I'd rather gamble. And, you know, if a guy, it was the kind of thing where he eventually, um, somebody would say like in front of their friends, they'd say, okay, well, give me. Uh, give me 35 start for uh, $200. And then I'd say, no, uh, right. I'll give you 55 for 500, you know? And so like, I'd have to make them feel uncomfortable, you know? Yeah. So, and that, well, that sort of helped me, but it ends up, you end up sort of, uh, you end up grinding in that spot. You know, there's no flash, <laughs> there's no flash shots being played there. I'll tell you. Uh, and, uh, but I, uh, John Spencer came over in 72 uh, uh, he uh, he came over to uh, Western Canada and uh, put on such a great sh show. And I had just won the North American Championship, and John was the uh, the world champion. And then they decided to have something, I think, in uh, March. And of course, uh, John had lost to uh, Alex Higgins mm -hmm. before he came back. And of course, we were all shocked. But uh, he was playing be beautifully uh, then, John, and he he was. Uh, uh, actually was quite uh, sick uh, for, you know, like before that, you know, the world championships actually, but still got to the final, of course. But, yeah. um, and uh, I asked him after we played our little match, uh, I asked him uh, if he thought that I was good enough to turn professional and they were, and he said, yeah, of course, and he put my name for it and I was accepted, but uh, accepted before the, uh, the championships and, uh, oh, sorry, no, like they, uh, they've had the championships already yeah of course so uh i uh i was accepted and uh, for the 73 championships and um i came over to the uk and i stayed up around bolton because uh, that's where john spencer lived up around there there was a you know a pretty good place to practice the well the balls of course are heavier they were sort of like somebody had just dropped it in the bucket and then put it on the table the cloth was thick the pockets were tight it was damp it was oh my gosh it was so it was so uh so different and um and you know so uh um i started to play i uh i think i i beat rex uh, no i beat dennis taylor in the first round yeah uh nine nine eight and uh, you know just sort of like you know because dennis was uh, uh like a newcomer as well that year and um and uh you know we've uh, we've had this wonderful friendship since uh, uh since then and uh, you know never sort of had any words or anything we just had a just a great friendship and uh 
And about that winter of 73, I ended up staying around Bolton and I just, uh, the, you know, the, you know, the rooms were cold. I had to put a five pen, pence piece into a, a heater. I mean, I'm telling you, it was so cold in the room. And then they, and then they ended up in, in uh, Birmingham. I'm, I'm not knocking the country, it's just the situation. Yeah. And then they ended up playing pot black up uh, in Birmingham and they and they had a minor strike or some kind of cold strike or something like that. Anyways, there was no heat in the hotels. And um, I, I, I remember not feeling well in pot black and uh, I, I didn't want to get into my bed because I could go like this and it was just like putting your foot into a, Oh my God, it was cold. It was, uh, you yeah. know, and then I get in there and I finally get, uh, get, uh, uh, warm. And then, you know, if you decide to move, you know, then it's, then Breathing. it's cold, like one inch over, you know, ah, like this. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, I really, but that was, I mean, like, that's all part of it. You're really, I mean, there is nothing, you know, nothing at all like Canada to, uh, you know, I, I mean, we're just sort of spoiled rotten, but, but just with uh, everything being difficult in it, it really sort of toughened me up, you know. And if anybody wanted me to stop being a grinder after that, well, they had no chance. I mean, I'll tell you what, I was, I mean, I was, uh, boy, I, you know, I started to play tough after that. But a great experience, got to meet all the players. But then, yeah, just, uh, and there weren't any tournaments. There was, you know, I, I played in two tournaments a year, something like that, and then, you know, when you when you play for money, you can always get the money back yeah. uh, the next. You know, like like the next day or the, the uh, you know like immediately you, you can double up or yeah. you know just bet more money. But uh, if you lose in a tournament, it's a, well you'll get them again next year, kid. You know that is the worst thing to say to me. You know you'll get them next year. Oh my god! It's and too that, far it, away. Yeah, yeah, and then it's the. You know, it's the, uh, you know, the long trip. I mean, I had a fear of flying then as well. I ended up in 74. I ended up taking the uh, 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 the QE2 back to back to London. And, uh, you know, so that's like four and a half uh, days so that I didn't have a, a, a nine-hour flight, yeah. you know. And, uh, but just, uh, you know, you just, that's just the way it was. I mean, I guess you could call me persistent. Yeah, slightly. Yeah, did all you you mentioned grinding a few times? Where did the um? I mean, obviously that name stuck. Uh, do you know where when when you got that and who gave you that name or that that, that kind of that's become well, attached was, to you? I think it. Well, they well they said that it was Alex, but it was uh, actually it was um. Uh, well, I think jokingly, like a few guys just said grinder that sort of stayed in the practice rooms or stayed in Canada, or, but then David. Uh, David Vine, when uh, after I had uh, clinched the uh, the worlds uh, with Alex there, and and uh, David of course went straight to Alex and said, uh, he said, well, he you know uh, he's a real grinder, isn't he? You know that, and uh, and then Alex said, yeah, he grinds uh, real hard, believe me, or something like that, and that's how it sort of uh, it's uh, it started there. But yeah, yeah, people were calling me the grinder. I did, you know, it wasn't uh, you know, it's sort of. I wanted to be known as Champagne Cliff kind of a thing. I wanted to spray all over the table and everything, and well, because I would drink it after I <laughs> won anything, and and um, uh, you know, but the grinder is sort of uh, you know, it's sort of a scary uh, name for kids. You know, the grinder's going to be here. Uh, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, you know, it's just it's got the, you know, it doesn't really have a ring to it, or else uh, if it's. You know, if it's got a ring to it, you know, for somebody else, then I really don't like it. <laughs> you um, you just mentioned there, you won the title in, uh, in uh, 1980, obviously against Alex, 18-16 victory. Um, coming from overseas and playing some of the best players in the world over here, um, you asking at the time, were you good enough to come over? Only And within a few years, you've come over, you know, you're at the pinnacle, you're at the top of the sport. Uh going in as the number one player in the world in 81 and 82 you know that must have been such a obviously one of the biggest achievements of your career just that game as well was such an it was such a great game with Alex um and yeah so that must have been one of the one of the highlights of many highlights that you've had in your career to, to have won that oh yeah yeah that was uh well I mean he wanted uh you know he uh, well uh, you know it's almost like you know, he forced me to beat him. I, I mean, he was, you know, he said that he threw it away. Well, I mean, I played him. I, I mean, I just, 
I mean, he was five one up and nine five, and they, you know, I mean, he he never plays to the crowd unless the, you know, like unless the, you know, the situation's called for, like it's the right shot or the, you know, the game's been won or whatever. But he was a he was a heck of a, a safety player, and I I didn't meet anybody that wanted to win uh, as badly as him. Uh, I yeah. ne- to this day I've never seen anybody want to win as much as he wanted to win. But, uh, uh, yeah, we had a few disagreements and, and this and that. And, uh, I took, you know, it sort of kept me away from him, which was, which was, uh, good. Um, uh, I remember, um, uh, when I missed a Brown at, uh, and then that leveled it at 16 all. And, and, and I went off to the washroom and I was screaming at myself and, in the, in the, you know, at the, uh, at the mirror. Uh, and uh, so until my face was almost purple, I think, and then you know, but some and and, and it just as I walked out, there's a few guys in Alex t-shirts, and they said, "Oh, you know, uh, you made them go and be sick or something." So uh, I really, uh, just, I mean, I was just nicely, nicely um, revved up, you know. It lit that fire I, underneath a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm still surprised that they don't actually talk about the final because it was. Uh, I mean, I. I made a, I think I, uh, uh, I mean, 119 uh, uh, break and didn't pot the black until the very end. I didn't yeah. miss a ball that frame, and then I made a, and then I made a 40 uh, a break with two plants, and uh, and then and then finished up the 75 clearance and didn't yeah. and, and didn't miss a ball as well. So, uh, but uh, as long as I can remember those things, I guess it's okay. But that was. Uh, that was really um, that. That was a nasty, a nasty final. I mean, yeah. that was just it, yeah. It was, it was like you know the Russian hockey player coming over to Canada kind of a thing. I guess uh, well, I was the Russian hockey player. You know, he's good, but he's not one of us. You know that mm-hmm. kind of it. No, no, no. But not you know. I mean, listen, I've got some wonderful friends yeah. over in the UK and all around the world because of uh, myself going to the UK. But then and. Uh, and Alex and I got along from, you know, from time to time. It was uh, a very uh, inter- interesting relationship, and very, very sad to, uh, you know, to see what happened to Alex and the way that he uh, he left this world. But uh, a lot of people uh, showed a lot of respect uh, for you know him and what he did for the game and everything, and and they're, and they're still doing it. I think when I've mentioned, um, when I put the post on about yourself and I uh, said, is um, you know, any questions that you'd like to ask Cliff? A lot of people came on and said, you know, one of the things that they did bring up a lot was, was Alex, obviously, because it's, it's, it's snooker, snooker history, uh, you know, the, 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 between you and Alex and, you know, how much is, it wasn't like a hate relationship, but the way you's, the way you've worked, maybe, maybe the clash of styles and people, you know, the vast questions regarding, you know, certain things that happened between yourselves and, um, and, but regarding Alex, I mean, in yourself, do you think it was just the clash of styles because he was so kind of flamboyant and and uh, you played to the crowd, whereas you were much more thoughtful and took your time? And, and do you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could, you know, I mean, I totally understand, and I hate to, I hate to actually bring up things, but they, you know, but they always seem to lead to something, and and I didn't. You know, I just didn't take any anything from anybody. I mean, I would certainly say something, and uh, and uh, you know, so then I would, and and you know, but he made me sort of, uh, you know, become my. I sort of, you know, was out of character a couple of times with him. But listen, I mean, the first uh, the first day that I met him, he was uh, the uh, the world champion, and, was, and and I came over in '73, and he was, uh, I think, uh, Mister. I was a call Mr. Billy or just something. Uh, they were uh, Weston Nally, I think they were running the uh, the World Snooker uh, Championship. And um, yeah, so I ended up going for lunch with Alex. He'd been out riding horses or something in the morning and doing all of his glamour thing. And, uh, you know, because he was wearing bell bottoms and, you know, like posing on the side of buses and, uh, you know, like with one hand sticking, you know, like it was a very, uh, you know, dynamic kind of a. Uh, uh, look and it I mean it was great for Snucker, that's for sure and at, you know so anyways uh, he he said to me uh, let's um, let's go to the pool room and it was or the Snooker club and it was uh, uh, Holtz or uh, Herbert Holtz place but I can't it's on it, it was on Windmill Street and uh, you know so he said to me 
he said that he'd give me 40 start because I never played the world championship 40 start for a fiver, you know, so I'd be in the gentleman that, that I, that I am. I only uh, took 28, you know, so anyways, I won, <laughs> I won, a, I won a few games and, and uh, he'd been, uh, you know, having a drink and so on. But anyways, uh, so then I left and uh, I was going down, I was uh, with one of the people from Weston Alley and, and I'm just going down the stairs and, you know, and he was still sort of screaming up there and he closed the, closed the door and, uh, and this, and this ball came down the stairs and went, went straight into the, uh, the, the, uh, the door, you know, like I, I had left. I mean, I could have gone back in and, you know, I forgot my, cigarettes I smoked at the time or whatever but you know you do, you don't forget things like that and that was I mean you know he must have gone like oh my god what have I done yeah. and uh, you know but anyways it didn't hit anybody but I mean I could have well I mean it you know and so uh, uh to say that we started off poorly is an <laughs> under, understatement but I always said like jokingly you know that you know, like we started off, uh, you know, terrible, and then it just got worse. You know that <laughs> that kind of a thing. But I always admired uh, watching them play, and I, you know, I could uh, I could tell, you know, if he was in a bad mood or if you know he didn't take you know a defeat very well. And uh, but uh, just a wonderful player. I mean, I can't. I mean, I could sit there and praise him, but I think he had a. I think. Uh, um, you know, if you if you talk to anybody that was involved in the game, I mean, I had you know enormous respect for him. And uh, when they uh, they had, uh, I I think they had something a book of quotes. Uh, they uh, they had all the top players in the world, uh, you know, uh, you know, quoting Alex and a genius and all that stuff. And I was the only guy that uh, that wasn't asked, <laughs> you know. You know, and I would have said something there. And even, even you know, when the, when the poor fellow passed away, like, I, you know, not one press guy, you know, asked what I thought of it. I mean, I, like, there was no, well, I don't know if it was Twitter then or whatever, but I, you know, it was you know, hard for me to show my respect uh, uh, publicly because I, I couldn't sort of get it out there kind of a thing. And, and, even, you know, even lawyers were so kind of linked together in the snooker world yeah. you, you, you couldn't get kind of you know your condolences to them type of thing yeah yeah well it, yeah yeah it just uh, it never seemed to uh, yeah just a, a strange situation but a, a horrible situation actually but uh yeah and and to actually play him uh, i knew that i ended up talking about him again yeah that's amazing eh? i should have uh yeah um yeah uh just uh, he's like a right. There's a Woody Nelson song or a, what, what is it? A Chris Christopherson song. You know, he's a um, there's a line there. He's a walking contradiction, partly truth and partly fiction. You know, brilliant. But uh, yeah, but that's what that's what uh, he reminded me of. And it's sort of uh, you know like if you walked into a place and the first thing I go is uh oh <laughs> or you know, th this will be interesting, or or else he's playing. So it yeah. was, uh, yeah, it was. Uh, the people couldn't couldn't wait to see him play. One of my biggest, um, being obviously a snooker fan, one of the biggest uh, memories I have of snooker growing up was uh, yourself. Um, in 1983, winning the I'm not not what didn't watch it live, so I was only I was, I was only young. But looking back and watching the game against Terry Griffiths in the the, the one four seven, the first Crucible one four seven. Um, a completely iconic moment in snooker gets played time and time again. I think I put it on. I put it on my Facebook page two days ago. It's had nearly fifteen thousand views on it in two days. So it goes to show how many people still kind of still want. They still love it and they still watch it. And um, I always remember like the dropping down to the knees thing, and then Bill Werbenick looking round. You did something in that final, like in that one four seven, that not a lot of people would have done, especially now. Um, you had one red left near the pink. And uh, a lot of people wouldn't wouldn't take a break at that moment for fear of maybe putting themselves off the stride or something. But you just kind of went right, and then you just walked over, and like the crowd started cheering, and you you kind of composed yourself. And I always thought that was an amazing thing because if that's right, I don't know if you think that's right, but a lot of people wouldn't do that for fear of they just don't want to get knocked out of their stride while they're playing. But you kind of just went, no, I'm going to take my time. I'm going to have a break. And it was an unbelievably hard shot you had to play to get on that last red because you had yeah. to play the reverse off the cushion to go past yeah. the pink yeah yeah it was a it was a good shot I, uh, 
I mean, I'm, you know, like I'm just, I was, I mean, I see the end of it all the time, you know, because even like with the YouTube, like they don't show the whole thing. <laughs> they only show the last four reds or something, which is about the same uh, at time, or three reds, you know, about the same time that Ronnie took for his 147. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, um, yeah, that was, and I, and I had such a long bridge too. I took, it's a bridge I, I, uh, stopped, I stopped using, um, uh, and, uh, you know, it just, uh, um, I was just amazed of how well that I got a hold of, uh, the white ball there. And then Jack, Jack crying going, keep rolling. And, uh, and, and I just got by the pink, but that was just, um, uh, I, my, I'll tell you, I was so, I was so ill. It was, uh. Uh, it was uh, it just like we had a, a Barb was uh, like the, like my wife was um, uh, right, my wife was um, expecting you know and that's the year that she lost the baby and I just uh, I found out at, at four months and that was uh, that was I, pro I think I I found out uh, about that after I uh, right they got me to phone my uh, phone Barb at uh, like uh, uh, ten minutes after after I. Uh, uh, made the 147. You know, they had a bottle of champagne up there, which I didn't drink or anything. And then, you know, spoke to her. And, and then uh, he, and then she said, I'm sorry that I lost the baby. Well, I mean, you know, yeah. So, and, and, you know, but she had her, 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 uh, her, her, um, her sister and her uh, mother was living with us at the time. So, um, and it, it sort of, well, it was, you know, purgatory, mm -hmm. but I uh, just it. Um, but the black, okay, yeah, sorry, you got carried away there. Uh, but the black, um, uh, like I was, you know, like I knew that Barb was, you know, pregnant, and and uh, I just I wasn't sleeping well, and I actually I had a like a bit of the flu or something, and my and my and my nose was running, uh, and uh, I. Like, I mean, I felt confident uh, or confident enough because I had visions of clearing up and then, you know, uh, and uh, not having blown my nose. <laughs> yeah. So I just thought, well, let's get, you know, let's uh, sort this out right away. Yes, it was relaxing. And Terry was having his cup of tea there and he just gave me a little smile and uh, had, had another pop off his cigarette. <laughs> Things were different. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We we played one time and he was and he and he had some tea and biscuits and uh, you know but no pillow, uh, so anyways, uh, we uh, yeah and then I and then I came back and I hit the sweetest uh, shot there and uh, and and uh, and then I uh, it funny you know I'm thinking about Alex again there I, like I uh, I. Um, I potted, uh, I, I potted the red and the last red on the side and drew back for the black and I'm shooting the black just sort of high on it, have to go down, hit the black ball cushion up towards the yellow. And, uh, but I was thinking while I was shooting that black there be uh, that not to go too far. That's why I left myself a little short because Alex, uh, that I think the year before, he, he, he made 15 blacks and uh, somehow he ended up uh, he ended up going too far on the uh, uh, well, the black to the yellow and going too far and then uh, just made it impossible for him to do it. So I I just said to myself, I don't care where the balls are. Like, just leave yourself a shot. Yeah. And then I ended up stunning the, uh, 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 the yellow ball in. And, uh, you know, there's so many different ways to play that shot. And I just chose to just aim a little bit thick and just uh, move the cue ball slightly to the right because I'm going to hit it firm and and just you know, ma ma maintain like a normal line. It's a shot that I you know play once a year, but yeah. I chose to play it there and just the sound of it going in. And then, you know, but I always tell people, uh, you know, that are Cliff Thorburn fans, of course, and there's a few of them out there. I'd say, okay, well, if you like the sound of that yellow, turn up the sound on the green. And uh, boy, you know, yes. you should hear the sound of just the back of a leather pocket. It was like, wow, that was uh, just uh, beautiful. Yep, uh, knocked the brown in, uh, got the, got on the blue, rolled the blue in, and then I got over and I realized that the pink wasn't on its spot. Well, well, it's never on its spot, is it? You know, it's always yeah. like a little bit high in that spot if it's untouched kind of a thing. So. And then I'm going, oh my God, you need luck. You know, so now I've got, 
you know, like more of an angle on the pick and I, uh, on the pink, and I just uh, rolled it in, shooting the black, and I I felt so good. I just said, I said that, uh, okay, uh, just don't right, don't let it touch the sides of the pocket, and that's what I, that's how I felt, and, and I just rolled it in. It was uh, sweet. You always kind of come across when you watch your play, you're so calm, so collected. Um, and just the, the look of the emotion when you put your hair back in, and it was just kind of like the release of doing it must have been extremely overwhelming for that because obviously it wasn't just the, like the financial aspect of it. Obviously, it was great, but to be the first person to do it at the World Championships, uh, like you said, you could just see the relief and the emotion on you because doing a 147 in that kind of, uh, in front of all them people on TV, it must have been extremely kind of like intense and intense. And so it must have been like a, just the relief of, if, if it doing it it was just kind of as you were walking out you've got your cue and you just kind of slammed your head back and you walked out and it just showed you know showed a hell of a lot of emotion which was great to see great yeah and don't forget i had my package of embassy cigarettes in my as well oh god uh, but anyways yeah that the, yeah yeah you're right i'm i'm uh you know but like there's other things that go on behind the scenes kind of thing like steve well first of all you know they say that i'm the first uh, person like to make a 147 at the crucible all of that so okay so that's like four years after that but don't forget that there was you know uh for what was it 50 uh 50 almost 60 world championships before that yeah you know that nobody had made a 147 so i'm you know extremely proud of that that yeah, uh, that, yeah so you know i i just thought that i'd throw that in because my my press guy just has he just hasn't been around here uh, but anyway, I'll, I'll be a new press guy that's fine uh, yeah well i need some help obviously so yeah and and that you know but uh, uh steven made the uh, the first televised 147 uh, uh the january of uh 82 in the uh, the ladder tournament and he i think that he'd been flying around the world or something and just arrived that morning of the thing or whatever and uh, he he made his one four seven. So now that was ITV. So well, I mean, all the BBC guys like Nick Hunter, the you know the the, the head guy and just a wonderful fellow. He said, "Oh my God, uh, ITV got the first one four seven. Now uh, you know we've got to get one." And I, you know, of course, I'm friends with everybody, and I know that they have this. And I, you know, I'm thinking about that, but not in a you know like in a really nice way. I you know, hey, this could be great, and uh, and I'm not even. You know, I didn't. I just, I just felt so good when when I was doing it. But I, you know, you know, when the black went in, and I and and I went BBC, and uh, you know, and then I just I thought of my dad, and uh, and, and you know, he was still alive and everything. It did. It, it just it was nice, and and, and uh, yeah, the euphoria. Uh, euphoria. I was just uh, yeah. That's. I mean, I just oh. Yes, it was a relief, uh, but uh, just to know that I was the first one was uh, was uh, was really neat, and I recognized it right away. But uh, that I I had no intention of dropping to my knees or anything like that. But it just felt like I didn't I didn't want to go anywhere. You know, I I, I just wanted to stay there forever yeah. on my knees down there with my. And then I you know I'm shooting. And I was shooting the yellow there, and I just sort of saw Bill's head there, and I, you know, it's sort of like I. But the first thing I thought was, you know, not now, Cato. You know, <laughs> Peter Sellers. And I just, I, you know, I just, I just, I just felt relaxed. I just felt terrific, and uh, I just, I felt, I, was, I was pretty calm, and I just, I liked the way that I took the balls. I, I mm. you know, there was no, I mean, milking the moment or whatever it is, but mm. you know, I mean, maybe somebody might have thought that about uh, the you know, uh, blowing my nose or whatever, but I was, you know, just, I mean, I, I run the colors off, uh, you know, uh, like, uh, you know, because the balls are there all the time. I'm, you know, it just, uh, I, I was, uh, I was pretty quick. I always remember the the green, like you just mentioned there. I love the green because a lot of people might have tried to run it round or stun it off two cushions, whereas you screwed it in past, but behind past the ball, which meant you had to really cue the ball extremely well to kind of screw it back from that position. So by saying that, I was like, obviously, when you look back, you think you must have been so confident the way you were striking the ball because a lot of people might have just thought, well, if I can just stun it off off the top side cushion and come round for the brown, but instead you've got through the ball perfectly and like screwed it past. And and I thought, yeah, yeah, you definitely felt comfortable on that 
Oh, I did, yeah. And I, of course, I don't have a you know a very a long kind of backswing, but uh, you know one of the advantages of having a uh, you know like uh, um, sorry, not having your you know like your depth perception being as well as it could be uh, is that when when you you know start start off uh, the, the, you know like you're like an inch away from you know, the cue ball, the tip's an inch away from the cue ball. And, you know, so like you bring it back and now, and now the cues, you know, it's like actually having like a longer backswing now. So, you know, I, I could generate power like a lot more easier than what it sort of uh, looked, but, uh, you know, and, and just, as I say, you know, playing a draw shot, like you just maintain the angle, you know, like you don't go like that. It just goes like this and the cloth goes to uh, the uh, tip goes to the, uh, the cloth. Now, but I felt good. Any, any shot that, uh, you know, uh, it's almost a strength of mine that any any shot that's just off straight, I I just have a knack for that. And there's you know a way to play that shot. And uh, you know if somebody wants a lesson, call them two three two two three one one. No, but well, that's a, no, but like there is a way to you know to play those shots that you don't. That there's yeah. Anyways, obviously I'm coaching now, but yeah. I I love the game. I've got patience and. Uh, I, you know, uh, at my age, I have, uh, I still have um, uh, energy and, uh, you know, I love the game and uh, I've got time to, uh, to coach. Yeah. Well, I remember, um, I mean, you retired in uh, 1996 uh, and then did you ever think that 22 years later that you'd have be at the Crucible uh, winning a, a title uh, with um, like 22 years later? Uh, did you yeah, think, yeah. Th did you think those days were behind you? Oh yeah, obviously, yeah. Just uh, well, you know what I mean. Like the matches are just best of threes and yeah. and stuff. Like that. But uh, yeah, being there and and the body in the final black and that that was uh, that was a fantastic feeling. Yeah, that was uh, that sort of came from uh, that that came from nowhere. Yeah, I remember uh, just uh, uh, if you don't mind me just going back here, the uh, playing. Uh, in, in my last match in, in that world team championship was my last tournament. And, uh, and I didn't actually think that it was going to be, but I, I was playing John Higgins and uh, I get it. So what, what was I? 48, I guess in 40 in uh, 96. Yeah. And, and uh, so uh, I'm playing, I'm playing John Higgins and I sort of got him, I've got him in a bit of trouble and uh, there's two reds on the side rail. And I actually went for, I went for a double, you know, and like with, with the cue ball, you know, like two reds uh, uh, on the pink ball side rail. And I'm, and I'm playing a double that you don't know, like to stay on the black, right? Well, I mean, what are you completely stupid? I mean, I I missed it, but person now I've left him a double, so that if he doesn't make, yes, of course, yeah, right. You just you just gave it like uh, the look there, and 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 you're totally right. It was, and I uh, I lost that frame, and I said, listen, if I can't if I can't compete, you know, representing my country in the World Team Championship and play a shot like that, I I have no interest, and that's. And that's the shot uh, that made me uh, want to stop playing. It was a, a horrible shot. But uh, but then I, uh, uh, I mean, obviously, if that situation came up again since then, when I just played, you know, sparingly kind of a thing, uh, I wasn't doing that when I played at the cru you know, at the Crucible like two or three years ago. I, you know, I wouldn't have done that again because I'll never, you know, like. That that's like that. I mean, I can't believe that I played that shot. You know, I can't I can't believe that I played that shot. But that's like being in Thunder Bay, like when you got no place to stay, like you're rolling the black in the side, and like you don't hit it hard enough. Well, it's the same thing as with the uh, as with the uh, double there. And uh, no, I uh, you know I you know I, my memory didn't go completely, but I yes, I loved that situation. It was uh, boy, that was, and they actually. Um, uh, they ran out of beer at the hotel. Oh. So I was trying to think, you know, like are all of my friends alcoholics? And then I realized that they are. No, 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 no. But anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, things are quieted down considerably. But uh, yeah, yeah, they ran out of beer. So I'm sort of, uh, I'm sort of, um, uh, well, not proud of it, but you know, uh, some people like that story. It is. So there were a few of you just drank the bar completely dry. 
yeah, yeah. Well, there, yeah, there were. Well, it, uh, you know, there there was a lot of people there because normally when I when I won something that there would you know be some uh, some kind of a uh, some kind of a party. There's, um, it's, there's, you've seen obviously there's been a lot of changes in in snooker over the years, um, especially recently, obviously with Barry Hearn taking over. There's a lot more ranking events, a lot more points up for grabs. As um, especially there used to be the World Championships, obviously you're aware that then there used to be a break. There's nothing like that anymore. The snooker, it's it's on all of the time. There's a lot of ranking points. There's a lot of traveling when obviously when 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 they're able to travel. When you were uh, when when you were in your prime back then playing, and there wasn't as many ranking events, did you did you like that setup, or would you would you have liked the setup the way it is today, where it's nonstop snooker all of the time? Uh, I think that I would have liked this era. Uh, I mean, I would have uh, I would have certainly changed my game. I mean, the fact that I mean we, you know. I don't want to make it sound like, well, you know, in the old days, you know, we had to walk nine miles to school and, and all that stuff. But, but this is um, a plane. I mean, everybody's got a practice table now, which, which is great in its own uh, right. And, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, the tables are heated in most situations. Uh, you know, they had the same lighting. They had the exact same cloth. And it's dry in the room, and and uh, you know, so it's uh, I mean, it's just absolutely wonderful. And that just to uh, you know, it, it's not like in North America, like especially Canada, playing snooker, where you just become like a road player. You become very proficient, and uh, you know, playing on crap tables, you know, yeah. like you know, you just know you have you can play on a guy's own table and and uh, know it better than that guy. You know, like especially under pressure balls and all that stuff. But I like the uh, the fact that uh, you know you like to practice. You don't have to go anywhere. You know, like there's, yeah. you know, it's. I mean, the, half the tables are in the guy's house and everything. So it's it, it's wonderful, and that's probably like that's you know as good a reason to why the game is uh, you know has uh, the standard has gotten uh, to where it is. But uh, but yeah, I would. You know, but I mean, if I was 20, well, if I was, uh, you know, even starting out kind of a thing and maybe, maybe could have, should have, would have, <laughs> uh, I just, yeah, it would have been great for me. I know that. And I would have had to change my game. And, uh, you know, if there was a coach around, uh, that's uh, 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 great. And somebody telling you not to beat yourself up and everything, but to actually just, you know, just going, you know, through the, you know, the, the motions, the motion, the shot, the same shot, same shot, like a practice range at a golf course. I think it's, uh, I think that I would have, uh, I would have really uh, loved it. I mean, we, we used to have two or three months off. Of course, I would have got peed off at it from, you know, playing too much and um, uh, woe is me kind of a thing, you know. But uh, there's, you know, worst, uh, there's worst places in the world, uh, aren't there? You know, they're being a professional player. But just to actually, and putting all that time into to loving it. And I know mm -hmm. that there are people out there that love the game. I don't think anybody loved the game more than I did. But uh, there, you know, um, thousands and tens of thousands of, of people that, uh, you know, just love the game and just need that one secret to, well, you know, that's one of them, and that's, uh, uh, you know, that's uh, practicing. I, I remember one time the guy said to me, he said, Thordman, you you spend uh, more time on the table than the cloth. <laughs> that's well, a great saying. That's a great saying. Yeah, yeah, but I, you know, but I mean, I felt like I was, you know, that that was fantastic, and everybody yeah. else, you know, playing, uh, I, I don't know, chess or backgammon or something, and I was just, I just loved it. Why wouldn't I? You um you you mentioned before that you're doing coaching. Um, is that something that you do on a regular basis? Yeah, I do. Not uh, not now, of course. Yeah. But uh, just uh, yeah, I'm uh, I you know uh, there's not a lot of uh, competitive snooker. Like you're only as good as the people that you're playing around, and that's just well not for myself, of course, or or Kirk Stevens or other Bob Chaperone, or it just you know that that the people, you know, there isn't somebody that sort of, you know, don't go as the one, you yeah. know, like the one that, it, you know, you know, right. And then a guy goes and turns pro, right. And then, you know, and then somebody else comes along. It's not that it's just, it's just, 
is just stopped completely. Nobody has the has the intentions uh, of uh, you know helping to develop somebody. I mean, I do. I, I just don't have the vehicle, I and mean, I don't. You know, I, uh, but it's a long story. But yeah, I can. I, well. I mean, obviously, I can help somebody. Yeah. I, you know, I mean, I, I well, I, okay, I, I've got patience and a wealth yeah. of information, but, uh, and I just, you know, that would be a dream thing for me. But, uh, and whoever I coach now is, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a great experience for me. I just, uh, I mean, I can help anybody. It'll also be a great experience for them as well, though, Cliff. Like like you've mentioned, that you know nobody loves the game as much as you, and you've got such a wealth of knowledge there that yeah. for anybody learning from you, you know, it'll be an absolute treat for them as well. Yeah. Well, I still, yeah, there's, uh, you know, like there's, well, there's so many different ways to play the game, but I still I still see stuff on TV, but that's, uh, it's just, it's, you know, everybody's, you know, like safety shots that used to be scientific, research in the old old days or like now it's uh you know like if you don't have those shots you can't turn pro i mean yeah. you know it's as simple as that so but uh, there's um you know there's so many different things that a person uh, can learn but I, listen i mean you know even if i didn't uh uh coach a top player uh you know i still love watching the game i mean i you know learned uh, many many things but we've been on for a while now yes right? i'm just about to finish yes i was just going to say you know cliff thank you so much for your time uh it's been it's been an absolute honor and privilege having a chat with you uh, i wish you and uh mrs thorburn a, a wonderful and safe and safe christmas and um hopefully um you'll be over sometime next year you come over i know paul rinaldi from north um who's uh yeah, paul i know you know paul um yeah. he's be putting yeah. exhibitions on i would love you to be come up north sometime and have an exhibition at paul's place i know he would love it and i would love to meet you in person and uh, and say hello so i just wish you okay. a wonderful christmas all right and to you and your missus and uh, all the uh, the snooker fans uh, out there uh, safe and happy christmas and um um, you know, it's uh, great that uh, we're all talking snooker in yes. this uh, horrible situation that we're in, but uh, life's not so bad, is it, today? Not today. Thank you very much, Cliff. I've really enjoyed it. I've loved it. Have a nice okay. Christmas. Me too. Thanks, Kevin. Same to you.